All right, good evening. I'd like to welcome everybody to the Berwick Planning Board meeting. This is a regular meeting for Thursday, July 18th, 2019. If we can all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Planning board members present tonight. We have the vice chair, Niall Shore. We have regular member, Nicole Fecto. We have <coughs> alternate member, Mike LaRue here uh, missing. We have Sean Winston. So Mike, you'll be a voting member tonight. We also have our code enforcement officer here and our planning technician slash webmaster slash Facebook administrator slash Concert promoter yes. James here. I don't want to forget that very important. <laughs> I'd like to open up the uh, public comment sessions open to any resident or any property owner in the town of Berwick to come forward and talk about anything that relates to the planning board. Public comment session is open. I'll start. Just state your name and address for the record, please. Sure. Nicole Fecto, One Wingate Lane, Berwick. Um, I wanted to <coughs> make a public comment, but as a member of the planning board, because I read a lot on Facebook, and maybe I shouldn't read as much as I do on Facebook, but the one thing that has become very clear to me through the reading is that the general public doesn't have a good grasp on the purpose and the power of the planning board. There's some alliteration for you as well. Um, so I wanted to talk about that very briefly. The purpose of the planning board is to uphold the land use ordinance and the comprehensive plan. And I, I quoted this because I thought it was a very good description of what the comprehensive plan is. And I don't think most people in the town know what it is or have read it. Um, we all know what it is and have read it. The comprehensive plan is the basis for land use regulations. It provides the nexus between the community's vision and regulation of private property. So one thing that I want to make clear to the general public is that when a private property owner comes in with a project to the land, um, to the planning board, our job is to run it through the land use ordinance through a very strict set of standards that we have. It's the same process for every single application that comes through to us. Um, we make sure it conforms to the land use ordinance and therefore supports the comprehensive plan. Our job is not to shut down a property because, or a project because a bunch of people don't like it. Our, if a private property owner comes before us and has a plan that satisfies the land use ordinance, satisfies any additional things that we ask of them, and supports the comprehensive plan, it's approved. It's private property. That's the beauty of America. Um, so I wanted, to, I wanted to make that really clear, and I also wanted to make it clear how the general public can change the land use ordinance and the comprehensive plan, because there was ways to do it. You vote on the land use ordinances. You vote on all this stuff, all these processes that we put people through. Um, <coughs> basically, you can propose an amendment. Uh, we're voting on a bunch of, or we're reviewing a bunch of amendments to the land use ordinance tonight. You can come here, stand at this podium and say, I want this changed. I'm proposing this amendment. The planning board will review it, make any modifications. And if we agree, we will recommend it to the select board who will again review it. And then if they recommend it to go to vote, it will go to vote. Um, we are forming a committee right now to redo the comprehensive plan. It's going to be really, really into It's a very important piece of work. And we want people's um, input. So step away from the keyboard, come be on the committee for the comprehensive plan and make some real changes. Because what I'm seeing is a lot of anger, a lot of hate, a lot of misguided anger and hate, um, and not a heck of a lot of things that are actually going to make changes. Um, and a lot of, I don't know, confusion about what it is that we do. So that's all I wanted to say. Come to the meetings, volunteer, and make sure you vote on our land use ordinances. All right. Thank you, Nicole. Uh, Nicole, <coughs> another thing. We do have one vacancy right now. We do. Put your on microphone the on. Board. Um, and so, if you would like to be a part of the process, there is a place for you. Yeah, we have a lot of fun. So, uh, public yeah, comment session is him. public comment session is open. Feel free to come forward. Sean Goodwin, sixty-five Sullivan Street. Sorry, going to be here again tonight. I'm going to put on a little tough love tonight. 
I wish to thank you folks for your efforts. I truly believe you see an injustice going on and your authority is being undermined by an apathetic and incompetent CEO. And with that said, I am extremely angry and my patience has run out. As Mr. Winston said at the last meeting, I cannot believe we are still talking about this. This is almost a month later. This is not our fault. Our contention is that the town follow the same rules as everybody else and that is not happening. The fact that this is a safety issue is ludicrous. I was awoken this morning at 6.50 in the morning by a diesel truck rumbling in the parking lot. It was a septic company adding another porta potty. He stayed with the engine running for 20 minutes and then left. There is no end to the nuisance this parking lot has given us. It is very apparent that the lot is in use today and again this weekend. This is completely unacceptable. Mr. Chair, at the last meeting, you and Ms. Fecto were very clear to the CEO that he shut the place down and I asked, how do you enforce this? And you said, I will find out. After almost a month, I am confident you have some kind of answer for that tonight. Mr. Chair, I failed to ask at the last meeting also, but what was the town manager's response to your email stating the town was in violation of the ordinance? Mr. Chair, what is the penalty for someone in violation of the conditional use policy? I'm sure you are all well aware that the lot has been off limits at least a half dozen times with half-assed attempts to do so while reopening when needed. This just makes the town and the CEO look even more incompetent. In fact, last week I approached Mr. Vincent about why the barricade had been permanently removed. He stated he had just got back from vacation and did not know that it was removed. He admitted that no one has the authority to remove barriers put up by him. Common sense suggests that this was done in his absence by the town illegally in my opinion. And if this is so, as of today, it is still gone and a lot is in use once again. I also take exception with Mr. Bellissimo's attempt at the last meeting of humor over his do not park against the fence sign, which is still lying prone on the ground outside my window. This is not a laughing matter and it is a slap in the face that is still there and just enforces his lack of experience and he should not be at the forefront of this situation. What are we doing here, folks? Where is the deceased order? I have in my possession the do not parking sign that we found floating alongside Sullivan Street headed towards the sewer grate. It is the essence of this whole process. Simply put, it stinks. In my opinion, this, this board has proved to be impotent in its ability to enforce its own ordinance. This is a clear indication of selective enforcement and should not be tolerated. I promise you this has set a bad precedent. I can also promise you that you have two applicants before you tonight, I believe, and countless others in the future that have or will probably jump through hoops to get their uses approved. I would hope that they get the same lax treatment that has been afforded to this town. <clears throat> thank you. Okay, thank you. I'll just address your question. So the email, uh, the correspondence that I initially had when you first came here, when, you're, uh, when Louisa first came here, I emailed the town manager. He asked for me to come in on a, uh, during, the di during the day. I worked during the day. I wasn't able to come in during the day, um, so I wasn't able to meet with him. But then the subsequent meeting that we had, um, speaking to the code enforcement officer, the code enforcement, we, I, we can't direct the code enforcement officer to do anything. He's an employee of the town. He works for the town manager. He works at the leisure of the select board. He's hired by the select board. He had a meeting with Steve Eldridge, the town manager, and basically, and I'll, I'm not putting words in your mouth, but what he, what he told me was that for, for the greater good of all the citizens in Berwick, he was not going to enforce this and keep this parking lot open. I, you've been to all the meetings, you've heard the comments that everybody here has made, that how we think it's absolutely ridiculous. 
that it's still being used. And you're right. It is what would happen. A cease and desist order would be served, and if operations continued that were outside, then there would be fines that would be handed down that could be enforced, obviously through court. But because there is no cease order, then that's where we are right now. I was disappointed to see the two by fours and plastic barricades. Um, I was really hoping that well, I was I was happy to see they shut down the parking lot the first day when I drove by. Did you put those up? Me? Yeah. I haven't touched a thing over yeah. there. Who put no, those Dan up? No, Dan put them up. You put those up, and somebody knocked them down. Yeah, they just take them down whenever they want to park there. I mean, I live right over there, so and I drive by that. I drive by your house ten times a day. Um, I would, I personally would like to see the big stone barriers that were moved twice so far to be moved there. That's not going to be knocked down. I mean, it, I still, I still think that it should be shut down, and I know that. Tom, are you here to talk about this? No. Okay. I will. Do you want to? I don't want to, but I will. <laughs> Is Tom Wright, Cemetery Road, um, is chairman of the Board of Selectmen. Is, um, I've heard all the discussion, all the arguments. Is I've said, stood here before and said that, you no, know, I want the town to follow the procedures. Is, as you had said, is the code enforcement works for the town manager. I cannot direct the code enforcement to do anything. Is I've told the town manager, I've let him know my feelings on this. Is <clears throat> you know, is he has come back with the same argument that I just heard you say that uh, somebody said earlier that you know it's a safety issue is why they're keeping it open. Is, I don't know. Is the uh, barriers is when they were up there is I you know said okay good you know they took it into their own hands somebody did it and you know they come and go as you say but. Is, uh, but at your next selectman, select board meeting, can't you take a, a, a vote and can't you direct the town manager to close that lot? It is well, you it could. Is, there's still the contention that the lot is approved for a certain number of cars. You know, that has been, you know, one of the contentions all along. Is I have not seen anything contrary to that, that it has been disallowed. So have you directed anybody to make sure that there are not more than the approved number? No, because again, I Has am anybody not. anybody in the town done that? I, I couldn't tell you. Right. Uh, I mean, that, baseball that, that, that presents somewhat of a problem. I mean, baseball's pretty much over now, and th this is gonna be on the agenda for the first, correct? Um, right? It's gonna I be on the agenda know. for the first. Yeah, yeah, trying to. So it, why not? I, 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 know, I, I know they've had the survey done, is I don't know where the state of the, the design for a parking lot is. I right. have no idea. I mean, why not in the interim? Why don't we just shut it, close it off yeah. so he doesn't have to come back here every two weeks? Um, I mean, are you I, satisfied with an explanation that, we're, that the code enforcement officer can ignore what the people of the town of Berwick have passed because it's quote unquote for the greater good? You find that acceptable? It is that has been the argument is I'm not an expert in that side of it is you personally it, not even as as a citizen many, of the town of Berwick, are you comfortable living in a town where somebody can ignore the law because it's convenient it no there's a contention about whether they're ignoring the law it, is that still well, the in contention that I heard <laughs> that, that still is in contention and the explanation as I that said, I heard and maybe it was incorrect is, was that it's it, it, that the law does not have to be followed because it's for the greater good not to follow it. it is, That's not the way we do the, things. You know, there's still the contention that there is an, a, an allowed parking spot. Yeah. And so it, now it becomes an, an enforcement issue right. as far Which as Which is numbers. nearly impossible. Yeah, Which is so. why it should just be shut down. So. What's the big deal? Is. There's plenty of parking in that park. There's never, yes. that parking lot has never been there for the right. park to use. Never been there. Never been there. Not for the park to use, no. but it has been a parking right. lot. The, tan the tannery the parking home. lot yeah. was a tannery parking yeah. lot. Now it's a town parking lot. Right. So it's still but a it's parking lot. Right, but that wasn't a parking lot. That was a s that was sober home. That's what that With was. Parking. Tom, not you for the park. Aware? The park not, was not the park the was chained off. No. The baseball fields were chained off. You could not access that through does, there. And I think that was actually part of the 
that was part of the conditional use for that. That does not. That, that it, they does couldn't not, have access to the park. No, it's still there's allowed parking there, correct? Well, okay, is so there's there allowed, allowed parking there. Is there allowed? Parking? I think that we're going to get. I think that we're get way off base right. here. And in order to keep, thank you, Tom. Yeah. Thank you, Tom. That I think we have our answer. So ridiculous. Um, I think we have our answer on this this yeah. thing. It I, is, the, you know, the town of Burwick is above the law. Is Nicole. is there's been a loud use. There's been contention. Is I know mm -hmm. that the town manager has been in contact with legal. Is I know he talked to code enforcement. Is you know is they feel that what they're doing is the correct thing. Okay. Is. I know that six months ago, Dan, the code enforcement officer served a cease order on a concrete plant that put nine people out of work for a couple months while they were going through the planning board process because they were operating that illegally. And you know, he could have looked the other way and said, well, this is for the greater good of these employees here in the town and, and kept it open. I th I th again, I think, I think you're mixing two things here. Is, yeah, they said it was good, great, good, they, but there is allowed parking there. That has been, the, that's the town's contention. Is, I don't care if it was for the sober home or if it was for a trick or treat factory. Is there was allowed parking there the parking went with the lot, and it's the same with the tannery. The parking was for the tannery. The change of the ownership from the tannery to private hands did not change the parking. But the, the use is, is a still there. That use but, is a parking but, lot. Tom, parking there's a question, there. and Lee J agreed that this was a legitimate question we we're going to have to res resolve, that once the sober home was knocked down, that the parking went with the sober home. Mm -hmm. Once there's no longer a sober home, there's no longer parking. So there's no longer a tannery, so there's no longer parking. No, that was zoned as a parking lot. It, not all of it, you know. The, it's not uh, a conditional use as a parking uh, lot. But, so anyways. I, I'm gonna read you a provision that you're gonna need to respond to if you're coming back on the first. <laughs> An application for a land use permit or site plan review approval must be denied for any property where a violation exists until such violation has been corrected or resolved. We're gonna talk a lot about that the next time. Okay. And based on what I know so far, and I'm not telling you how I'm gonna vote because new evidence may come in, but on, based on the evidence that I've heard so far, I, I don't see how you're gonna show, convince me that you're not in violation, uh, and therefore I don't see how you're gonna be able to go forward. But we'll worry about that on the first. All right, thanks, Tom. Now I'm up for my public comment section. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and and, and I, I want to thank Nicole for leading into the comprehensive plan because I was going to speak about that tonight. As, um, as, uh, as Nicole said, we're in the process of updating the comprehensive plan, and uh, it's a very important thing. I think the original one was in 1989, 90. and then it was revised in oh, 2014, yeah. maybe. Is, um, so a lot of a lot of changes have happened in Berwick since then, and uh, I think it's very important that we get as large a group as possible to do this. And to give a background of what is involved, is not everybody's going to be concentrating on a complete plan. It'll be broken down into subsections, and there'll be subcommittees appointed for heritage, for open space, for economic development, everything like that. So everybody gets a chance to show their own expertise and their own opinions, is because a lot of it is opinion. Is um, so is uh, I encourage everybody to get in touch with the planning department. Is uh, you know James can you know direct us. I know that they're looking forward to you know getting a uh, meeting going soon. Is uh, so, um, but that's the kind of have to plan. So now I know there is a rather large development going to be talked about tonight off of Blackberry Hill. Is um, is uh, we have another potential for a very large development off of Pine Hill with a moral piece of property for sale for forty some acres there. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's important that we get a handle on what's going on is I've been reading the comprehensive plan a lot lately um, and you know one of the things that they talk about a lot is growth outside the village area and uh, we have a very well-defined village area so is the growth outside of there is I won't say it's frowned upon but 
no, we try to keep it in. So that's something that we're all going to have to take a look at. Um, <clears throat> the other thing is conservation of open space in agricultural land, especially on the Morrill property. We have 40 acres of prime agricultural land that if, you know, more than likely, because no farm is going to be able to afford it, is going to be put into house lots, and we'll be losing 40 acres of prime agricultural land in Berwick, which we don't have a lot of anymore. You know, so those are some of the things we need to think about. Other things in the comprehensive plan that we need to look at as far as large developments is non-compatible non -compatible uses. Is, you know, is a factory wouldn't go in a neighborhood is a huge development shouldn't go in agricultural land. That's non-compatible. And the other thing also is I've noticed over the last several years is a lot of the developments, the course the developers try to squeeze in as many lots as possible because it's, you know, benefits them, benefits their bottom line. But we're starting to get lots now that are squeezed in so tight there's no room for any other activity is a case in point is up on Sullivan Street the new construction up there is the house that's going in on the corner their garage is one car length from the road so there's no way they're going to be able to turn around in their driveway they're going to be backing into that road right on that corner where Pine Hill and Sullivan Road meet I know when Dobson Woods went in up the road here is there was a lot of confusion as far as lot lines is they were bringing surveyors in to drop exact points of where the foundations could go because they couldn't be any more than a few inches out of place. You know, I think we need to think about how we need to look at a way that the developers can make their profits but we don't end up with these ridiculous lots in shapes and sizes that don't allow a good use of the land. So that's it okay. for tonight. All right. Thanks, Tom. Thank you. Anybody else for public comment? This is public comment. We have two public hearings this evening, so this is just public comment session. Going once, going twice. All right, we'll close the public comment session. Moving on to the approval of minutes for the June 6, 2019 meeting. I don't have anything on these. We're not approving the June 20th meeting? Yeah, the June 20th meeting. June 20th, yeah. What did I say? The, the, the six. June 6th. Yeah. I think oh. it's actually the oh, I'm June sorry, June 20th, yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, I thought I was Thanks, there for the six. Thanks for making me. <laughs> Thanks for making me look good. <laughs> June twentieth. It says sixth on here, Niles. I know it's I the agenda, well, not you. Yeah, no, I understand that. I will blame the agenda guy. Now these, I was going to say these. James did a good job on them. Right. And, <laughs> at that point, but. Um, I move we approve the minutes for the June twentieth meeting. Okay. Second. We, motion and a second. Further discussion. All in favor. I'm abstaining. And abstaining? Okay, yeah. that's uh, three yes, none or zero no, and one abstaining. All right. Next is the public hearing for subdivision amendment Blackberry Hill Road map R56 lot 3-2. Applicant is Black Dog Realty. This is a public hearing only for this application. Thank you. Only for this application. It's open to any resident property owner to come up here and talk about just this application on Blackberry Hill Road. The um, that subdivision right across from the school so and, and can we remind the, the application is to reduce the number of lots from 90 to 77 that's all that's before us correct right. because of a DEP because of the right. Department of Environmental Protection but that's Protection. the only issue before that's us that's the only, is the issue before us. That's the only thing that yeah this is already an, this was already an approved subdivision back in 2007 and now they're just here because they have to reduce the lot size because of the setbacks that the DEP has come up with for them. So, um, and we had the DEP public hearing at the last meeting, which, the which addressed all of the um, concerns with the impact on the nature and wetlands and um, and such. So the right. Yes. So does that mean that if we 
for some reason don't approve this amendment, it would have to stay at 90? <laughs> well, I, I don't. Mean, I think the DEP is that's above that's the, the, the BPB. Why? Yeah, I don't know. That's a good question, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. If we get there. Well, there's no amendment for a bridge, so we don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on who's Please putting it on. in, I guess. Can I give a more <laughs> formal overview? <laughs> That'd be great. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Members of the Planning Board, my name is Joe Maletti. I'm with Ambit Engineering representing the applicant Black Dog Realty with me tonight is Mark Phillips as well. Um, joining me tonight is Re Rebecca Brown with Greeman Peterson. She is the author of the updated traffic impact study that you should have received in your packet Did tonight. You that, Dave? Mm -hmm. um, she'll be okay. presenting a little piece of the project uh, regarding the traffic impact analysis that she did. Um, we are requesting amended subdivision approval for the 77 lot subdivision known as Blackberry Hill uh, Village along Blackberry Hill Road. Um, as you stated before, it was originally approved in 2009 as a 90-lot subdivision for affordable elderly housing. That is uh, housing um, where at least one owner occupant is 55 years of age or older. Am I correct in that, Mark? Um, due to the econo economic conditions at the time it was originally approved, Mark decided to uh, hold off on building the project. Several permits had lapsed and were renewed. More recently, it's the site location permit, and that has to do with the, the overall uh, uh, environmental impacts of the project. Um, it had to be reapplied for. Part of the process of the, that opened up the review of that, um, that permit again to, um, among others, Inland Fisheries and Wildlife. Uh, one of their comments and requirements was to update the buffer setback from what was previously approved at 250 feet setback to a 300 foot setback. That is the reason for the reduction in the number of lots from 90 to 77. Um, additionally, we have some revisions to the culvert crossing along the boulevard, uh, along Ferguson Brook. Um, give you vo an overview of the project. Uh, there are two access points. Um, by the way, north is up on the, on the sheet that you see in front of you. Um, there is an easterly access point, um, it's enter only. The westerly access is uh, enter, enter and exit. Um, there's a boulevard connecting into the, into the rest of the project where there are a number of loops, loop roads. Um, there's a boulevard separated by an island, sidewalk that extends well into the project. Um, there's a recreational area, clubhouse. Um, and associated landscaping. The site is served by public water and sewer. There is a pump station with a force main. The force main gets pumped up to the intersection near 236. Um, that pump station has been sized to accommodate and, and be for the better good of the, the larger uh, community along Blackberry Hill Road. For future use, it'll be turned over to the city for, um, for, for operation uh, when it's completed. A uh, number of stormwater treatment uh, BMPs are filtration ponds, detention ponds, forested buffers, and porous pavement. There were some, uh, some there was some discussion, some some questions that were fielded in previous uh, meetings about traffic, and I'd like to have Rebecca come up and. Well, okay. I mean, we're also going to be discussing this in old business. Yeah. I just real I really want to offer this opportunity for for residents. I see. To, to come up. Oh, oh so okay. We can, we can sure. get more into detail. All right. I wasn't. Sh I, w I didn't understand the process. That's okay. Oh, thank yeah, you. That's all right. Okay. James, did you make the traffic study public? I on the website? I did it. I'm okay. Because that was done above and beyond. They were not required to, to renew right. their traffic study, right. and that was above and beyond that they did right. that. So. Okay. Um, and just one one point. Um, do you, have you guys received the DEP permit back yet? Well, uh, can we just talk about this and Go ahead. Yeah, old sure. business? Sure, sure. Yep. We, yeah, let's just, I just want to keep this open for a public hearing, mm -hmm. just, just to get people up here. Just so we, if you have any questions about this project, now's the time to come up here and we'll write, I'll write the questions down and then when we get into old business on this application, then we'll, we'll ask the applicant to answer those questions. So. Tom Wright again from Cemetery Road, 96 Cemetery Road, is uh, um, is one of the problems with that process is they're describing new things that are going on and we don't know what those changes are. So unless they discuss them, is how we know the correct answers to 
ask. You watched our last planning board meeting. Yeah. Is, um, is, but did they have all this with mm -hmm. them? Yes, they did. Mm -hmm. yeah. presented they did. it. Yeah. Is, um, so, is, uh, but um, again, it is, you know, I just you know, want to reiterate what I had said earlier that is, you know, we're now looking again at developments outside of the village center and taking up, you know, valuable open space. Is I know that this was approved prior, is but you know, is I guess I should say that let this be a lesson to everybody out there that opposes these things. Is as you said, come and get involved, mm -hmm. and then because now it's too late. So is if you want the next one to be changed to your liking, come and get involved because otherwise, is it's going to as Nicole said, it's by what the land use ordinance says, and you know. So you have to come in and be active. I see very few people here on this public comment, as I expected a lot more, because I, I they're all, I, I they're I all online. Follow, yeah, I do follow the hate book page. Yeah. And, uh, is, uh, Listen, you know, and, they're uh, not here. And, as, as you said, it's so much easier to sit at home mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, watch us on BCTV, which they put down, and then complain about everything that all the volunteers in town do. So. Thank you. This is a public hearing for a subdivision amendment, Blackberry Hill Road. Anybody else want to come forward, ask any questions, or make any comments on this application? Going once, going twice. See somebody moving? No? Okay, close the public hearing. Uh, next is a public hearing for conditional use application, 115 School Street, map U3, lot 42. It's in the R1 zone with frontage on Route 9. The applicant is William Dame. Actually, do I just uh, take it down your stuff for right now? I know we're going to get right back to you, but it'll really confuse people with all that stuff up there. And just a brief overview, because we have you in old business as well. You got it. Um, good evening. My name's Ryan McCarthy. I'm with Tidewater Engineering and Surveying. I'm here to represent the applicant, uh, William Dame. Uh, he's in the audience with me tonight. Um, this is a conditional use application for a site located at 115 School Street. Um, the existing site is currently used for auto sales. The applicant is looking to build a 30 by 40 um, garage on the property and add the use of auto repair to this site. Um, business will be open Monday through Friday, 8 to 5. Um, the lighting on the building will all be shining down, um, dark sky compliant with shielding. Um, for screening, we're proposing solid six foot fences on both sidelines to screen um, the, the development from the abutters. Um, the building will be connected to both public water and sewer, and the parking for the vehicle sales will be out front, up front, and the parking for vehicle repairs will be towards the back. Okay. Thank you. All right, this is a public hearing for the application 115 School Street. Anybody like to come forward? Okay. Going once, going twice, we'll close the public hearing. Moving on to old business, subdivision amendment, Blackberry Hill Road, map bar 56, lot 3-2, Black Dog Realty. So we'll have the uh, applicant come back up and then I'll turn it over to um, James. What do you got? The only thing I, I would have is um, asking if you got, do you, have you gotten the DP permit back? We have not. Okay. Yeah. So in terms of action for the board tonight, it was made pretty clear on June 6 that the board wouldn't act until you guys had the DEP permit back. Understood. Are we on the same page? Understood. Same page? If I make it, we have a conditional approval based on that. No. There's no such thing as a conditional, conditional use. <laughs> we don't have the, we don't have everything that we need to approve it anyway, do we? I think the- We do. We the do. only thing that we- We have the, the conditions and the findings of fact in here somewhere? We, I, I, I'm pretty sure that we don't need those because this is already improved application. Okay. And we're just doing an amendment mm -hmm. okay. um, by reducing the, the lot size. Um, I mean, uh, the, the uh, number of lots on mm -hmm. there. Now, did you have a time frame? For the DP, um, 
after tonight's meeting, we are submitting. We, we've been working with them, um, resolving things along the way, and we're at a point where after tonight's meeting, we, we're going to turn in a uh, complete package for for renewal of the, the permit. Is one of the conditions for that application to the state that you have an approved subdivision? No. Okay. Okay. I mean, l last time we said we, we were going to kind of put this on the back burner for, for right now, right? Um, I don't recall that being stated, but... I don't either. It was basically, I don't basically saying that. we're waiting just to make sure that everything is good with the DEP. It was Lee Jay's strong recommendation. And the, I, I went through the... I, I do Lee recall Jay, that. Lee Jay and I had a conversation. I went back through the meeting on June 6th, and it's... We're waiting for the DEP permit. Right. But so once you have that, you come back, and I think I would defer to the town planner. But for me, I mean, I, I wouldn't. I would. I, I would move forward with with an approval six. because oh. you okay. know putting it up for you know for an approval. But if that's what we decided last time, and if he really strongly feels that, then then I would say that that's what we would go with. Um, yeah. Um, in the minutes from the June 6th meeting, it says Mr. Feldman recommended to the board that the application is tabled until the DEP permit is finalized. So that's his recommendation. Yeah. I mean, I want to go with his recommendation. I mean, if it was me, but that's why we spend money on hiring a town planner. So, what you look hesitant about that? I'm, I'm, oh, I'm I'm trying to process in my mind the pro what 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 the steps are if now that the the public meeting is kind of out of the way. So you're done. All we're waiting is to get that, and then you come back in. Correct. With, with the, you send, you make sure you get that to James as soon as that application, or as soon as your permit comes back, yeah. send it to James, we'll get you on the agenda, and then that's it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. That's it. It is somewhat like a conditional approval <laughs> to be here. Uh, no, no. Well, we haven't voted, no. but. I, okay. So you, you would still vote on it. Yeah. We're going to have to vote on it, correct. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're, we're going to have to vote, vote to approve the amendment to the application. Yeah. That's so the only the thing that we're voting on is to approve the amendment. And it, so it's tabled, and if, we're if it's... We're not even going to table. We'll just leave it open, yeah. But if it doesn't happen in a month, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful it does. But if, if it's to the next meeting, I can just call. I don't have to come here. I can call James. You can just James. Call. Right. Okay, that's all I needed to know. Okay. All right. Anything else from me? That's it. Okay. Thank you. I mean, you're not going to start construction tomorrow anyway. Oh, <laughs> never mind. Never <laughs> mind. <laughs> <laughs> well, is anybody going to shut it down? <laughs> All right. I'm kidding. Do you have any questions on that? Mark, I don't believe so. Okay. And I think that this, hey, this is a recommendation from DEP. They're going to approve it. Right? Yeah. Okay. We could talk about that traffic study, though, just for the folks at home. Actually, since you came all the way here yeah. to talk about the traffic study, yeah. <laughs> yeah, why don't we do that? I'm sorry. Let's just get that on the record. Yeah, Good idea. it is. Good idea. Thank you, Nicole. Well, you know, every once in a while. All right. Thank you. Uh, good evening. I'm Rebecca Brown from Greenman Peterson. Um, so we did prepare a, a traffic impact assessment, which was um, really more of a review of the previous traffic study that was um, completed uh, back in September of 2006, and then looking at some updated data to um, determine whether or not the findings of that original study were still valid, and then also doing a review of the safety um, of the two access points that are proposed and um, a couple of the intersections that are nearby um, to make sure that uh, those intersections would still operate safely with the, the traffic that would be generated by this project. So the study area for our um, updated study included the two site driveways that are proposed on Blackberry Hill Village, or excuse me, Blackberry Hill Road, and then the intersection of Berwick Road with Blackberry Hill and the intersection of Route 236 with uh, Berwick Road as well. Um, so the original traffic study that was done back in 2006 um, had included traffic volume projections out to a 2017 design year. It was a 10-year design year from um, planned opening um, of the facility. And they projected traffic volumes based on a 1.5% per year growth rate, um, which was a total of about 18% growth um, over those, that entire time period. Uh, we looked at historic traffic counts 
um, along Blackberry Hill Road, um, Berwick Road, and Route 236 um, from 2007 until 2017, which was the most recent year that was um, available from Maine DOT. And what that generally showed is that traffic volumes on Blackberry Hill Road have been decreasing at a rate of about 2.3%. So over that time, they've actually decreased um, a total of about 19%. Um, the traffic volumes on Berwick Road and Route 236 have remained pretty much um, constant since 2007. Um, so based on that, we determined that the traffic volumes that were originally counted back in 2006 would be higher than any counts that we would go out and collect now. So those projections out to a 10-year design horizon would certainly be much higher than um, what we would project if we were to go out and do the counts again. Um, the original traffic study also included projections of traffic volumes that would be generated by the site itself. And those traffic volumes were based on the Institute of Transportation Engineers, which is the um, ITE standard manual that we would typically use, um, that they used land use code 240, which is uh, manufactured homes. Um, this facility is proposed to have um, senior adult housing um, or age-restricted housing, which actually generates traffic at a little bit lower rate than a manufactured housing development would. In addition, um, obviously the number of units is going down from 90 units to 77 units. So with that, um, the site is expected to generate 16 fewer vehicle trips during the weekday morning peak hour and 25 fewer trips during the weekday PM peak hour than what was originally included in the, the traffic volume projections. Um, so based on that, we think that both the um, the no build condition without um, the traffic generated by the site and the build condition with traffic generated by the site would both be lower now than what was originally projected. Um, the original traffic study that was done also looked at um, delays and queuing at each of the study area intersections and found that at all of those intersections, um, all of the movements would operate at a level of service C or better, um, which generally level of service D or better is considered acceptable. So these were all operating at more than acceptable um, levels of service. Um, and we would agree with those, those original findings that we anticipate all of these intersections would continue operating at level of service C or better. Um, the other component that I mentioned was the, the safety component. So we did look at crash patterns that have been happening at the study area intersections and along Blackberry Hill Road um, where the two site driveways are proposed um, to ensure that there aren't any existing safety issues out in that area. Um, we looked at a six-year period from 2013 to 2018 and found that along the segment of Blackberry Hill Road um, between the, the Easterly um, Hussey School driveway and uh, Berwick Road that there was only three crashes that occurred um, during that six-year time period, and one of those involved um, a collision with a deer. Um, and the other two were related to traffic turning into or out of um, the Hussey School. These didn't indicate any type of collision pattern or anything that would um, that would indicate a safety issue. The other intersection that we looked at was Berwick Road and Blackberry um, Hill Road. There was only one collision that had occurred at that intersection over the six-year period, but when we were doing the... Um, the site visit, we did notice that um, that intersection is obviously located on the curved section of Berwick Road. And as you're approaching the intersection coming from 236 towards the intersection, you don't really see that it's two separate roadways or that there's an intersection there on the curve. Um, so we did recommend that an additional sign be posted as you're approaching that intersection. Um, with It's sort of the, the curve on, um, or excuse me, intersection on curve warning sign um, to be posted there. Um, also at the intersection of 236 and Berwick Road, again, there was only three collisions that occurred at this intersection over that three, or excuse me, six year period. Um, so it doesn't indicate a particular safety problem, but we did note that 236 had recently been resurfaced. And when that resurfacing was done, they had also resurfaced a small portion of Berwick Road and the stop bar was never actually replaced. Um, so we would recommend 
um, installing another <coughs> stop line at that just to reinforce the stop condition, particularly um, where you're coming around a curve there and you don't see the stop sign um, until you get pretty close to the intersection. Uh, the other component that we looked at related to the safety of the driveways was uh, the sight distances. As you're um, exiting the driveway, looking in either direction, and as you're approaching the driveway to ensure that vehicles can see a vehicle that's stopping to turn in or out of the driveway. Um, to do this, we first measured speeds along um, uh, Blackberry Hill Road adjacent to the site. And we look for the 85th percentile speed, which is the speed that 85% of traffic is traveling at or below. Um, so 15% of people may be traveling higher, 85% of people are traveling at or below that. And that's generally considered to be the design speed of a roadway. Um, this road is posted for 40 miles per hour. And what we found was um, speeds of 43 miles per hour in the eastbound direction going away from the stop condition and 42 miles per hour in the westbound direction going towards the stop condition, um, which is pretty consistent with the posted speed limit of 40 miles per hour. Um, based on those measurements, we, sh we would be required to have a sight distance exiting the driveway of 385 feet. Um, we have over 500 feet in either direction from both driveways, with the exception of the uh, westerly driveway looking to the east, um, where there is some vegetation that is along the edge of the roadway um, that restricts that sight line to about 310 feet. <coughs> so um, we put together this graphic here that shows um, some proposed clearing of vegetation. Um, the blue area there shows you what is proposed for clearing. So with that clearing of vegetation, we can extend that sight line to 385 feet. Um, it could be extended further if desired, but um, what we've shown here is what would be required for clearing um, to meet that 385 feet of sight lines. Um, so overall, we found that um, all of the study area intersections operate at acceptable levels of service with the, the proposed um, <coughs> development, and that there's really no safety concerns um, provided these minor um, improvements that we recommended uh, do get implemented as well. So All right, thank you. Specific questions? No, that's very thorough. Mm. <laughs> thank, you. thank you. All right. Well, if there's nothing else on this, if the applicant doesn't have anything else, the board have anything else on this? Well, will the applicant be amending your plan to, uh, according to the we, removal we, of the we vegetation? Will. We were already um, planning to do the clearing. That, that was something that was, um, that was pointed out in the, in the previous uh, study. Um, I believe may, it might be a little different. It's a little longer, I think. Um, and the signage. We will. All right. Thank you. Um, okay, next is conditional use application 115 School Street, map U3, lot 42. It's in the R1 zone with frontage on Route 9, applicants William Dame. And I'll, James? I think so. The updated findings of facts, you have a finding in there from June 20th about the site walk. Uh, during the meeting, the board discussed several issues with the applicant relating to stormwater, fencing, and the building design. All the issues were satisfied for the board during the discuss discussion. That was then ours. <laughs> Ryan will have Ryan will talk about the fence. Okay. Let's talk about the fence. Let's okay, so um, no major changes other than the fence that we're talking about tonight. Um, I apologize for getting this in so so um, close to the meeting. Um, the the change that we're proposing was well, the originally we were proposing to keep the fence in the location that it's at now and just extend it further back. But after uh, the applicant had discussions with that abutter, um, they chose to <coughs> that it would be better to move that fence onto the applicant's property and extend it back from there. Um, that avoids confusion in the future for future property owners um, or future buyers as well. Um, and it kind of solidifies that where the boundary line actually is. We didn't put it exactly on the boundary line. We put it a foot off. Um, but uh, the plan has been updated 
to show where we're proposing that fence. Any questions from the board? Mm -hmm. Okay, James, I have one thing here in the findings. Oh, no. Yeah, I have one thing here in the, um, uh, the findings of fact. This is a public hearing and site walk were set for June 20th, 2019. I th it's a public hearing and site walk was held on June 20th, 2019. The public hearing was held today. Right, the site walk was The site walk the was site held. Walk, so a pub okay, yeah. was set. Then, then I'm looking at was set. A site walk was set for the 20th. Was, yeah. was and the, set. And the hearing and was set for today. Right. Yep. So it's a public hearing and site walk was set. No, a public, a site walk. A site walk was held. <laughs> a site walk was held. And a was public hearing held. was set. <laughs> yes. Hearing July 18th. Or Let me just take that line out. It says a public hearing and site walk were set for June 20th, Well, 2019. it's good to have the some kind of a date for reference to the minutes, but maybe a we site held walk a site was held on the twentieth. On the twentieth, and yeah. then the public hearing was and public and hearing. The public hearing. A set. public hearing was set. Yeah, you're right. Just get rid of that. Right so that. if there are any so English teachers watching, <laughs> just get rid of that line because you that line is that line's extremely as as confusing. Yeah, the line is extremely probably confusing. Probably just get rid of it. If we got rid of that line, and then we then there also has to be a line in here that a public hearing was held today. Right. Just Pretty much just strike it and then at the bottom to say the public hearing was um, set at July 18th and there's no comments from the public? No, there was no comments from the public. Okay. Anybody else? All right, so we have three votes this evening. We have to approve the findings of fact, we have to uh, approve the conditions of approval, and then we have to approve the application. So if there's nothing else, uh, we're looking for a motion to approve the findings of fact. So moved. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Further discussion? All in favor? Okay. Uh, next is conditions of approval. We have to approve the conditions of approval. The, the, there's only two conditions here, which is our standard uh, mm -hmm. conditions that we normally have in here. I move that we approve the conditions of approval for 115 School Street. Second. Okay. Further discussion? All in favor? Okay. And then final application. Approve the application. I move that we approve the final application. Okay. Second. Further discussion? All in favor? Okay. All right, that's it. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. You're all set. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Uh, <clears throat> next on the agenda is uh, we're into new business now. Conditional use application 537 Portland Street, map R72, lot 7. It's in the aquifer protection zone, and the applicant is Doucette Forestry. James. Sure, I'll just cover the staff memo since I put all of the memos into Cole's uh, packet. So <laughs> We so got them. We, we, Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so um, Doucette Forestry Products is seeking approval to develop the site for use as a sawmill and stump grinding operation for the purpose of processing lumber and creating erosion control material from stumpage. The application is calling for the construction of a 5,000 square foot building for office and a sawmill operation and the redevelopment of, an, of the outside area for the creation of a stump grinding and storage area of both stumpage as well as finished product. The plan calls for storage of finished products and bins located on the site and shown on the proposed plan. And, and this is where I'll invite Atar, Brian, Travis, um, so the project is, um, Lee J puts, it's considered a, a waste facility, and Brian will go into this. Um, so there's going to be a determination or a, a discussion on, is this a sawmill? Is this a waste facility? Is it both? If it's a waste facility, then it's not permitted in the aquifer protection district. Um, Travis came in four or five months ago a couple times. He was in maybe actually four or five different times. And at the, at the time, 
it was determined that it was a, a sawmill. Um, but we can, Brian, you can continue on and kind of explain why Lee J thinks it's a waste facility. How's it going? So my name for the record is Brian Nielsen from Atar Engineering. Thank you, James, and thank you for seeing us. I know it was kind of a short notice. So, As far as it being, uh, can't exactly say why he decided to classify as a waste facility, but I suspect it was because we had to get a solid waste permit. The M well, he had to get a permit through the MDEP program. Uh, the MDEP considers anything to do with wood chipping or stump grinding to be considered wood waste and requires a permit. While if you're making wood byproducts through the MDEP definition, it's still, con even if you're selling those products, it's still considered wood waste. We believe per the Berwick land use ordinance, waste, especially solid waste, as this would possibly be considered is not a sellable material. One moment, I have the, uh, the definition ready. Not a solid material? So it's a solid material, but it uh, can't be considered, waste. we don't believe it's considered solid waste by the Berwick Land Use Ordinance. And I can just jump in just for a sec. Sure. So on 9.8, uh, a person informed by the code enforcement officer that he it requires a conditional use permit, which Dan did, and obviously a sawmill is a sawmill, right? Well, we have it defined in our land use ordinance. A so. saw, right, a sawmill. Yeah. A mill a for sawing logs into lumber. Right, we know is what that a, a sawmill is. But yeah. then I think the <laughs> point of um, what well, Lee J would kind of bring up, which, which kind of triggers it into waste. Travis, go ahead. Um, so, as I don't know if any of you have ever, my name's Travis Doucette, sorry. Um, I don't know if any of you have ever seen a sawmill operation, but there is a byproduct from a sawmill. And so my main source of business is, I have a log truck. Many of you probably have seen me go through town a million times. My job, or part of my job, is to, I, I'm hired out by all the tree companies that do residential trees around people's houses. And so they hire me, I go pick the wood up, they cut it down, they don't have a way to move it, so I go get it. And so the purpose of this facility and this property is to bring the logs, they're just cut whatever, because they just their job is to get them on the ground, the whole tree, sometimes the stump, everything. And so sometimes I have to bring a dump truck over to get it. And so I bring all this back and I have a sawmill. And so the purpose is to take the tree, it, sometimes it's a good tree, sometimes it's not, I cut the log out of it. I mean, if it was always just logs, I would, you know, it would be great, but it's not. And so I take the log and then I saw it on the, my sawmill and sell the lumber. Well, the rest of it, I have sometimes a short piece, sometimes long pieces, a stump, whatever, the branches, whatever. Well, we have a tub grinder and a wood chipper and we make products with it. And so that's what I want the property for, is to sell the products to the towns people and to whoever, landscapers and whoever. So the waste, where Lee J says it's solid waste, mm. is technically, yeah. I wouldn't call it solid waste, I would just call Use it a I would agree with you. If, yeah. if you look at, at the land use ordinance mm -hmm. definitions, yeah. I mean, let's read them. Right. Waste facility. Yeah. Any land area structure, location, equipment, or combination of them, including dumps, used for handling hazardous or solid waste, sludge, or septage. No, that's not what this is no, about. It's not. There's not even not even close. And can I just say, I know many of you have gone, so we're operating behind mix right now. And I I know you guys have been over there because of the concrete plant. And so you'll see what it's kind of a mess over there. But what I want to state is that I can't control I'm working through somebody else's permit. That's not my property. And it's, I can't control what somebody else does on their property. So he's allowing us to work there. And some of that is ours, but we process our stuff as it comes in. And he's a big, Mick Construction, that's who it is. And they're a big company and they do a lot of work. And so they'll, some days I'll be there, it's all cleaned up. And all of a sudden 50 loads of whatever comes in and it's just, it's his permit and that's his area to do that. And so that's not what it's gonna be like across the street. As it comes in, 
it's going to be processed. It's not going to be a disaster. I don't want it to be a mess. I want it to look nice. I want All it right, to can, can so I ask you? Yeah. Do you saw logs into lumber? Yes. Using a mill or machine? Yes. Then by golly, you're a sawmill. Yes. And solid waste. If you All look right. at the and solid can you waste give definition. Me a, uh, yeah. You may not be able to do this precisely. Give me a for instance. What percentage of your operation is going to be this additional stuff you described for us? Do you well, think? So, okay, so right now, what I do is the logs are what I want, okay? If I could just get logs, like I said, it'd be great. And so, all these trees that get caught on these people's yards, well, they're 100 year old trees, a lot of them. So, the chances of there being a nail or a tree house built on them are, are quite high, okay? And so, I take these back. I metal detect them and I so I find metal or whatever and a lot of times it's been grown around so you can't do anything so you can't sell those logs to a bigger mill so what I do is I the ones that pass all the criteria I sell all those to a bigger mill and then the rest of them that I can't sell I saw which is a lot it's probably 25 30 40 percent of them I keep for myself because I can't I wouldn't even the amount of what I pick up I mean it's 50, 60 tr truckloads a week, I couldn't keep up with it. So I sell a majority of them. And so, but I, I get a lot of waste. So that it, right now is probably 90% of my business, but I want it to be, I want to gear it more towards the waste of the, not the waste, I don't want to say waste, the Chipping. byproduct of it um, and sell that product. And so obviously I'm going to continue to do my logs and then I actually am hiring a couple people to to take care of the grinding of that and to clean it up and you know we you know so there's bark so we saw like pure bark mulch and mm -hmm. all the colors and then like with the stumps you know we shear those get all the dirt rocks it's all ends up being loam you know we let it that's why you'll see a pile we have we have that all in but, the, but everything is a byproduct everything of, that goes of in the sawing of the logs yes everything. so to look at it our sure sounds like a sawmill. Yeah, to it me. doesn't sound like I a think waste it's a saw facility. Mill. Yeah, I, th I think I you're think a sawmill. I think we've, yeah. we've established that. So now, where does that leave us? Since we have a memo talking about how this qualifies as a waste facility. Well, it's just a memo. It's just yeah. a staff memo. Yeah. It's right. just an well, opinion. Well, and we're just at step one anyway. Yeah. So yeah, it doesn't yeah. step one. I think we would have had this discussion and, and you know. So well, a well, waste we just facility. So we're going to proceed as if this is a sawmill. And all we're doing tonight is just looking to see if the application is complete. If it's complete. So just to say this, solid waste, which is what a waste facility it would be handling, is useless, unwanted, or discarded solid material, that which is not what like the, is which isn't what this is. Right. So it's not useless, it's not unwanted, it is a and it's commodity. Not ha it, it, there's no hazardous no. Right, and it's not hazardous. required from DEP to do this. In fact, the yeah. town brings all their yeah. stuff to us, we grind. Of course they, yeah. they do. All right, you're <laughs> so, all right, let's not get into that. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's not get into that. That's step one, I guess Brian can turn <laughs> but do we have the application? Wood from Adder Engineering. Uh, Brian Nielsen really did all the work oh, yes. on this project along with Travis. Yeah, so what I'd like to do is have Brian come up and kind of review the project with you. <clears throat> um, but Mr. Vice Chair, you did ask about Lee J. So yesterday um, we went through a pretty lengthy email that um, both uh, Dan and James have that I sent to Lee J establishing our position on why we felt it was a sawmill. And Lee J's only response was that we should pitch that same thing to you to this evening. So well, I think been, he. It's been pitched and caught. Well, so thank you very much. We appreciate um, the decision. So why don't I let Brian come up and explain the project Please. in greater detail with <coughs> you? And then Please. if you have any questions, I'm sure any one of us could answer it. Uh, we are hoping that you do find the application complete tonight if you, if you find that. And, hopefully schedule the public hearing. Thank you. Hello again. Any questions based off of that before I just begin my quick little speech? Go ahead. All right. So the project we're proposing is a forestry products facility on Portland Street, Route 4. Uh, the facility will be a 5,000 square foot steel building set near the locations of the existing or the remnants of the existing buildings on the site. Uh, the remainder of the developed area be used as a workspace and material storage. Um, in its current condition, the site is primarily developed over the aquifer protection overlay district. We're proposing to revegetate much of the area and develop some of the workspace outside of the AP zone. The grading on the site should be fairly minimal, just enough for safe passage of equipment 
and to help facilitate stormwater drainage away from the building. And the overall proposed development would reduce the overall impervious surface area by 3,300 square feet. And that's about all I have for the engineering breakdown. So if you have any specific questions, I'm happy to answer them. Has everybody looked through the application? I'm trying to get through it right now. Yeah, I mean, I, I looked through the application. <laughs> this is, this is uh, extremely thorough. Trying to earn that paycheck. Good job. Water test results from 1988. Very good year, year of my birth. <laughs> <laughs> I was 10 years old. I mean, there were two existing wells. I was older than him. Yeah. Well, so that's why we included the water test. Sure. I yeah. just would like to use those same wells for a while. That's true. There, there, we did put a proposed well just in case on the site if the board felt we needed to. There are two existing wells. Uh, we're doing our best to locate them in the brush. Um, <laughs> we'd like to re reuse those if possible. Questions from the board? Remember tonight, all we're doing is just voting on, looking at the application to see if it's yeah. complete. Any questions? No, no questions. Uh, no, I have no questions. No. Okay. So at this point, we can discuss uh, if we want. To, somebody would like to make a motion that the um, application oh, is I complete. Just, I just want to check one. Thing. There it is. Um, and we'll look at. Hold on. Well, I will uh, make a motion that we find the application complete for the for the sake of discussion. An application is a sawmill, and, as a and sawmill. I will second the uh, the uh, motion. Okay, Thank we have a motion and a second discussion. Um, hours of operation. Six to five, Monday through Saturday. It's part of the application. Right. And it is listed in the application. It is? Okay. It is I just it don't is. have There's it off the top so of my head. so much stuff here. Yeah, it's 101 pages, so <laughs> okay. no. Any questions that are in there, you know, feel free to ask. Oh, we will. Yeah. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion on this um, motion? I just want to make sure. And is there a low impact design statement? Yeah. In regards to the stormwater? In regards to anything huh it's, it's in there well in oh, regards okay. to stormwater yeah yeah well I in regards to no, no, anything right. there, there should be a written statement documenting a proposed low impact design for the site sure we are uh, increasing uh, the forced buffers to the north uh, help protect the wetlands and like I said we're reducing the overall impervious to right. the site which will help you know reduce any stormwater impact to the surrounding environment wonderful that's her big thing it's it's the flavor well, of the day the and for good reason. So yeah. I just want to make sure it's yep. complete. Well, yep. I right. can't vote it complete if I don't know if it's there. I'm saying it's great. <laughs> I mean, Nicole, yeah. of course, wooded buff is as long as they're not in wetlands are uh, certainly recognized oh, yeah. as yeah. low impact. So okay. right. we just need we probably should have statement in there. That's clarified, all. and we can certainly follow up with that. But we are increasing the buffers from what's there, and there's a decrease awesome. in impervious. Area. I saw that. Yeah, I saw that, which is awesome. And then the I guess the only other thing for that I would be looking for which I mean this is like a this is 101 pages is um, the noise impact okay. I mean how much noise does it generate doing this it, it's on route four so right but it's part of the application we've set the waste processing yard as mm -hmm. far off the road as we can okay. and of course he's next to a ready mix plant he's right. got a plant across the street there's next to an mm -hmm. auto yeah the train, there's no right. residents that we can right, find right. Um, Just going through the application. Yeah. The okay, perfect. Didn't, didn't we also at one time decide low impact design was more than stormwater management? It had to do with renewable energy and. It just yeah, just any anything, but there and should did, be a statement. Think about Just put a statement energy when in you were there. This together? The renewable energy. What are you? Solar panels. Um, you know, be honest, have you thought about it or not? Tight insulation on your building. No, I mean, great wood chips that we sell for, for power. There you go. Right. It's all recycling. <laughs> we sell, he sold 500 yards of wood chips to the PSH this morning. So, you know, re as far as renewable energy, it's had to make a feasible project with either solar or wind unless there are federal or state incentives right mm -hmm. now. You know, if there are some incentives, you but can you make could, it work. you could insulate it more tightly, and that would be useful. You could. I mean, here's a, Travis I has say, a... I will say, I 
Wilson, sorry. 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 Um, our heating system is a wood chip boiler. Maybe. See, now we're talking. Now Thank you very write much. that down you and put about it in it, here, you and that's an your low impact Thank design you. statement. That's all we wanted. Yeah. Okay. You gave yeah, us an answer. Thank you. Right. We're good to go. And there's a well insulated building. So on the three things we talked about, I'll follow yeah. up and send a memo to James Perfect. in the morning explaining those in greater detail if that's okay. Yeah, just right. to include it in the application yeah. so that it's actually complete. That'd be great. Okay. We have a motion to find the application complete and a second. Any further discussion on this? Any more questions about LID? No. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm satisfied. We're good. Okay. All in favor? Okay. It's four nothing. Okay. You're complete. Um, Thank you so much. Public hearing. Well, there's also a, a site, a site walk oh, as site well. Walk. Mm -hmm. This would be August, this August 1st, first. Thursday, August 1st for a site walk and a public hearing work. <coughs> public <coughs> hearing will be at 630. Site walk will be, what time do you think? 530. 530? 530? Sure. Okay, site walk at 530. Thank you. For the site walk, would you like to see the building staked out? Or what would you like to yeah. see? As yeah. much yeah. as humanly yeah. possible. Okay. Yeah. 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 And we all know the site pretty well, and there's yep. enough mm -hmm. existing things there that we can locate it. So 530 for the site walk and 630 for the public hearing? Correct. Yeah. Great. Thank, thank you. Thanks so much for your time. All right, thank you. But making the determination on the use, too. All right. You can take your uh, plans if you're all set. You don't want them? They're yours. Not right now. Not right now. <laughs> 530. Thank you so much. All right, next on the agenda is we're going to look at these land use ordinance amendments. I feel like that we're going to be rushing these through. We are. Well, I mean, we can. So our, um, if you take a look at our owner-occupied apartment, the, the, what we have now is confusing and it doesn't make sense. For owner-occupied apartments, they have to be at least 1,200 square feet, which is, it's, I mean, it's huge. Where accessory dwelling units is a kind of a, bad term or it's or it's a real thing that's uh, AARP is pushing and um, like smart growth or grow smart main like build main and the accessory dwelling unit I mean that we just replace owner occupied apartments it simplifies it um, should be tab five So the, that handout that you just had, Dave, that yeah. those are the um, amendments from last time. Gotcha. Yeah. That's why I'm like looking at them. I'm mm -hmm. like, this doesn't make sense. So, so, so under the, the amendment, if uh, an accessory apartment was 900 feet, it would now be a separate residence and would have to... No, well, this said between five and 800. So what if it's 900? Oh, well, if it's nine, so we can talk about what square footage that you would want and if it's something that we can't figure out I can wait till next next vote but um, well suppose we just said more than 500 and not put a limit on it is there some reason we want to put a limit on it I mean you want to lower I had it, the, so I, you want to lower the minimum to 500 I get that yeah but why do we need to put why do we need to lower the maximum to 800 so I had it I had the maximum at 1200 and Lee J was talking about how that it would even be that'd be big so maybe it's something we look at and research a bit to see for the these accessory apartments I mean I, I would like to research this a little bit more yeah. it seems like we haven't talked about this at all I've never seen this come before us well, the, at all. The, I mean the process is we talk about it tonight right I'm yeah. just saying that in general like the general public has not come to us like we have a problem, so we're not well, no, super I'm, I'm familiar. I'm with telling us. you, you have a problem with the owner occupied. I understand that. Section. That's what you're telling me. I just, I, I think we need more time to like look at it. The, the, the problem is that the the square footage is too high. That is that the problem? Right. Right. So we, I get that we lower the the minimum to 500, but I still don't understand why we lower the maximum to 800. Yeah, I. I would agree with you. 
I'd agree. So why don't we just lower the minimum to 500 and not worry about a maximum? Could we live with that? I would. Yeah. I'm a happy man. I would. And Dave and I, we talked about tiny homes a bit, which they were, what was it, Exeter or one of those towns or no? Northampton. Northampton. Some guy wanted, all right, like a college grad. Wanted she like wanted to live in her parents' backyard. Like 150 and a, square feet. Yeah. And the town didn't want that, to, didn't approve that. I mean, was she was basically living in a shed, but it was like a mobile, like yeah. tiny home that she had a, a hose hooked up and an extension cord from her parents' house. Hmm. And the town shut her down. Well, I could see how you wouldn't want that in some zones in the town. But there's nothing that says that they, that can't happen. Well, so that's the, why it sounds like there is now. <laughs> 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 I don't mean? know. Is there like some specific person that were that came that wanted this changed, or is this just you? No, it's. Through that? I mean, it's it's something that AARP and Build Main as okay. general so we could we could do as, this and we could change. There's no yeah. There's no deal there's no this, urgency so. to do it. Okay. Um, so th I guess that could go to the next well uh, we could we can table that for and, and maybe we can keep talking about it and not really propose anything we just say we're taking comments on accessory d dwelling units I would like why don't we just leave it where it is see if anybody comes forward and then we can worry about it we could at least after we, the public hearing we could keep the um we could keep everything the same keep it owner occupied apartments and just reduce the minimum you could do it that way I can live with that. We'll look at more over and talk more about yeah, it. Let's, let's, let's talk about hemp. Yes, yeah, let's talk so about hemp. What's next? Hemp. Industrial <laughs> hemp is um, it's cannabis that has essentially no THC. It can't get you high. It's where CBD comes from. It's where um, different materials come from. It's a good, it's a good crop. Um, it's a very good crop. It can produce fifty to $100,000 an acre. <laughs> yeah, and as, of, and as of right now, if someone came in to the office and asked to do that, for Dan, the way that I, I feel like he would have to interpret it would be it would be too close to just regular pot because it's not defined. So you go whatever. Okay, well, so we're defining too, it, so we're and then we're also adding it. it to the land use table. Yep. Yep. Okay. And it's conditional. Yeah, that's fine. Yep. All right. Okay. Next. Substantial expansion. The substantial expansion. Um, so. What would the noise one before that? Let's talk. Oh, about I'm that. sorry, I missed that one. Yeah, yeah the, noise the noise one is just like, um, it says yeah. all construction activities can't violate the ordinance essentially, right. and it should be all activities shouldn't violate. Sure. Them. Yeah. Makes sense. It's just a common sense change. Yeah. And then the next, the next one is the. Isn't there a couple on renaming? Yeah, rename low impact. It's some of these are bold, some of these aren't. Rename low impact industrial to low impact manufacturing. Why not? Yeah. So, uh, if you look at the definition of low impact mm. industrial, I think really it's manufacturing. It's it's compiling. So we're not changing components. the definition. Uh, mine is we're all screwed up. I, next on here, I have after industrial hemp, I have noise, and then I have substantial well, expansion. Uh, right under at, industrial hemp, look at number three. You've See got, number three. It just was not just numbered. yeah. Yeah. You got three and oh, okay. Yeah, those are other changes. <laughs> it's yeah. just uh, you got the look. Uh, I deserve. They're, they're formatting yeah. issues in the way yeah, this is different designed. Form well, yeah, there's different formatting. On yeah. it. my bad. Not a problem. It'd be helpful if I had color, or maybe more time. Just moved it over. So All right. low impact industrial. It's really low impact manufacturing. If mm -hmm. you look at the definition, it's like putting the putting together components. And then I think it would be really appropriate to, to rename our downtown from commercial industrial. Mm -hmm. There's no more industrial uses downtown. It would be village, village commercial. Let that sink in. What is a brewery listed at as again? Low impact industrial. But it would be low impact manufacturing then, because yep. they're manufacturing beer. And then beer. that's in the village, and that's in the village district. So, why would so we, we couldn't rename the commercial industrial district to village commercial because we have a brewery that's already there that is low impact manufacturing. Yeah, 
It would just be, I mean, it's just no industrial. It'd, be no it'd just in, be commercial. It'd be no industrial uses in the. So we have a definition for industrial. But we're getting rid of the industrial <laughs> use. Your recommendation is low impact industrial goes away, becomes low impact manufacturing. But we already have a low impact manufacturing business downtown. Yeah, no, you keep, you keep low impact manufacturing downtown. It's just not called, it's just a semantic. Change. Yeah, we just changed the label of the downtown, not the uses that are allowed. So we're changing it to village commercial. Okay. Yeah, yes. Sounds, yeah. So low impact industrial effectively stays. It just renamed to manufacturing because I think that's more appropriate right. of what it actually is. So then we also have to, to change to, our to figure definition. out like how we got to low impact industrial. There used to be like high impact industrial. There is medium, and then there is light intensity, and then light intensity and medium were the same. So we got rid of medium. And then, we, and then industrial, or high, high intensity just became industrial. And then light intensity became low impact industrial. Okay. okay. Next. What is the next one? My, my copy got scooped up Slight over common there. sense tweet. Oh, the, the next was noise. Noise. And then, after and then that, substantial, substantial expansion. So substantial expansion. There's folk, there are folks that came in. They had a 1,200 um, foot expansion to their feed supply company. Mm -hmm. I feel like that was probably excessive for them to have to come in. It, it, doesn't, it didn't affect the use of it. it didn't affect really the impact. Um, the ordinance is still covered. If it is a, a small business that's expanding, say, 1,000 square feet, and it's more than 25%, it's still covered. Okay. So that allows people to expand without having to go through a conditional use process. All right, the mineral extraction. We talked about, I remember we talked about this mm -hmm. a long time. Yeah, so mineral. So we're changing the land use table. Right, so mineral extraction right now is just allowed. You can just do it without a permit, without even going to Dan first. Hmm. So it seems like a pretty intensive use that like, should go through. Parking lot. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Because part of mineral extraction is the reclamation plan afterwards. And right now, I mean, there's there's a DEP, but there, there probably should be some local oversight as well. Okay. Yep. What's next? Parking space. Oh God. Yeah. So. Um, I don't see that. Right yeah, now, I the, don't see the it definition either. of right underneath mineral extraction. Oh, it's not on mine. I don't have it. Go ahead. Yep. So the um, definition of. Um, Parking has a standard in it which requires 200 square feet. Mm -hmm. On page 59 of our land use ordinance, mm -hmm. there is a diagram mm -hmm. and there's parking standards, standards which uh, prescribes 166 square foot spot. Those are really small, the 166 square foot spot, having, having been measuring parking spots lately. So, Either way, uh, standards as a general rule shouldn't be in definitions, and we should address that page 59 because that, that diagram was taken directly from the SMRPC model mm -hmm. ordinance from 1990. Mm -hmm. So either way, I mean, either way, it's a discrepancy, right? So it says mm -hmm. it has to be 200, 200 square feet, and then 59 says you shall follow this standard which leads you to 165 square feet. So what are you proposing, that we just take out parking space? Because I don't have that in front of me, so I don't no. know. No, it says we oh. take out the 200 square oh. foot in the definition. Parking okay. space just says an area for the parking of vehicles. So hmm. taking out an area well, of 200 on? square feet exclusive of drivers or aisles for the parking of vehicles. Didn't we have a real problem trying to fit in the concrete plants into into a definition of something? Yeah, mineral extraction. Right. But it was sort of was a tortured way we got there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should have a definition of concrete facility or whatever the exact. No, we, thing. No, we, we defined um, we defined mineral industry so that we we did that in the last change. So we didn't have to go through that. It, so the concrete plant would be further would be defined as, as what? Um, look at. It. 
Where's your copy? Peace amendments. What was in there? I mean, what I have here is the, the changes as of. So if you look at the, um, the land use ordinance that's on the site now, we'll have mineral industry in the definitions. So why are we getting rid of the exclusive of drivers or aisles? As of November 6, 2018, but w when was the most recent? June. June, June 2019. It should be on the. Oh, that's why. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Next, right? Okay. What is it? You don't have your copy, do you? I had a copy printed. Marijuana out. establishment, mm. a cultivation facility, a products manufacturing facility, a testing facility, or a marijuana storefront licensed under Title 28. So the reason to define that is because the licensing that I'm going to be proposing to the select board will be by marijuana establishment mm -hmm. as a catch-all. $1,000 per mar marijuana establishment. So that covers storefront rec adult use and then they're going to either say they want it more or they want it uh, I've, I've put a lot of thought into it I think that's the fairest way of doing it I have a recommendation sure that um, it should be per square foot of facility and set a, a standpoint let's say under 3,000 square feet over 3,000 to 10,000 square feet and then plus 10,000 square feet this these are just I'm just throwing numbers out because at that point you could get a thousand dollars for a small scale, mm -hmm. four or five thousand for a medium scale, and even more than that. And because they're going to be generating a lot more right. <laughs> revenue, yeah. and they can afford something like that and if you're going Steve on a was large basically scale. Say, Steve basically said, like the select board is going to ask for more. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, that, that I think trying to scale it into two or three different categories on size, and also another thing that I thought is. Um, you, I, I'd recommend keeping the medical and adult use separate for cultivating facilities unless they are together. Like if you're just someone that's going to produce a medical, you know, cultivating for medical only versus cultivating for medical and adult use, um, there's different standards for both, for either or. So if you keep them separated at least, because right now it's still the... Um, DHHS that is controlling the medical side, but it's now the, what is it, the, the, the policies is the, I can't remember the name of the, the thing, but they're in charge of the adult use. Um, it's all under one umbrella, but it still has different people that are like um, making sure that it's up to spec. Um, another thing is, is for the cooperatives and medical marijuana production facilities. Um, it defines it as two um, cultivators. Um, one of my thoughts is to say that, what if someone that's in R3, let's say that has farmland, has a wife and a husband, and they want to grow, that now changes it from, if they have their licenses, one of them either can't grow there and now has to rent a facility or both of them would have to rent a facility on that. Um, with a cultivation facility, I would try and say that um, as long as there's no sales there, I would try and say that it should be allowed on all of R3. Um, just because now with the new laws for med medicinal, a caregiver can grow or sell up to 75% of their products to store fronts whether it's a dispensary or a caregiver storefront. So if you can cultivate it, moving it to a storefront, I mean, you could, let's say, just throwing this out there, I grow a lot, 75% of it goes to a store. I'm having no traffic, or not even you know, adding to it, it's just now it's there and it's going somewhere else. I think, yeah, I mean, I think, I think with a cooperative, yeah. if it's um, it's a fine line. I, but to me, I feel like if it's three people or more, because let's say there's a lot of farmers that want to change their pole barn to a grow facility, 
but they can't because they can't they, it has to be on route four route nine you know I think that for agricultural use it would be pretty easy just to have just to allow them to grow because I mean it's still at two people it's not that much room you're talking under six thousand square feet so you you'd say is you'd increase the cooperative bar to yep. three or more people yeah why don't you can you put that in an email and, and formulate that and send it to James okay. and then James can possibly put that on here yeah yep. We defer to out. you as the expertise <laughs> on the, this. Well, I'm just trying to think because, like, case in point, me and my wife, if we have our licenses, if this goes through, then one of us can't do it at our house because then um, we'd have to rent a facility on Route 9 or Route 4. Right. Where I'm in R3. Right. So if, anyways, yeah, so so if you upped it to 3, then you're good. Right. Yeah. Or anyone else that has, uh, you know, two people. Okay. Right, right. So the nec next one's uh, marijuana testing facilities. And I mean, that's th that's one of the next, I guess, market opportunities. I mean, they're not growing there. They're just people that have to grow. They it's need, a third party they testing. They have to be, yep. yeah, testing. Just have a, you just have a typo there on title. That's it. Yep. Okay. So we've, we've defined marijuana testing facility facility license under title 28b to develop research test marijuana marijuana products and other substances and that is going to be fall into the same location as medical marijuana cooperatives medical marijuana production facilities and it's in the r3 and rci zone only on properties that have frontage on route nine and four yep okay yep. So that's we're just adding that and then the rest here this is a duplicate yeah yeah that was from the earlier meeting yeah, uh, yeah I, I included in the in the packets. Um, we were gonna go for a little further with uh, marijuana. Um, the proposal was relaxing a little further, maybe maybe some for downtown and stuff. Um, I think I think w the goal for all of us is just trying to get it to where we want it, reduce the negative externalities. Um, I think we're at a point where where there's some developments that have been improved. So I think it probably makes sense to see how that goes, see what the feeling is before we do anything else. My recommendation is that this public hearing gets held on August 13th, or no, August, uh, 15th. August 15th, because we're gonna have a lot on the agenda next week in two weeks. And I think that we need to move this, it. This more. Yeah, I mean, it's, I, I, think it's, I think we're either looking at, uh, yeah. It's gonna have to go to the 15th. Or, and then we're gonna have to vote on it in June. I mean, that's all, yeah. That, that's. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, I think there's, I don't, I can't think of anything that's urgent that needs to be. Um, See if we can talk to Patty. I'm sure Patty will yeah. let us move it to the 15th. If we finish and approve it for the 15th, and then the week after that, if it gets, a, if we approve it, then it could go to the selectmen the week after yep. that. But we're gonna have too much on the agenda. Oh yeah, for sure, for next, sure. Two public hearings already next. Yep. Yeah. I agree. Okay. I'll talk with Patty. All right. Thanks, James. Mrs. Sheldon, you're here. Is it second public comment? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, Louisa Sheldon, 65 Sullivan Street. I am here tonight. It's July the 18th, right? July the 18th, 2017, there was a public hearing right in this very room about the August 8th, 2017 special town meeting warrant for the purchase of the sober home, the former Marga Wanda nursing home. So two years ago today, I came to this public hearing and I voiced my concerns about any transformation of that property and how it would affect me. And I think if you guys take a look at the videos, if they're still available, that myself and the former tenant who used to live in the trailer, excuse me, the mobile home. What date was that? That was July 18, 2017. 2017. So two years ago tonight, when the town was pitching a rec center, I came to a public hearing. 
and I voiced my concerns and discussed buffering, water, parking, all of it was addressed. And I was promised that, essentially I was promised that the land use ordinance would probably come into play with planning. Now we look at all these projects going on in this town. There's 101 pages for the guys who are here tonight. There's 133 pages for credere documents to do with just one aspect of the tannery. I noticed that $75,000 was spent on credere just for engineering services to evaluate 133 page plan. To date, I don't think any money has been invested in this property next door to us that has cost us physical damage from the excavation that took place last year on I think it was June 18th or June 19th when I came down and spoke before the very board of selectmen because somebody called me at work there was an excavator ramming the ground and removing the curb on the parking lot which I am going to approach you if you don't mind and I'm going to give you a quick picture May I approach? Sure, yeah, I know exactly what you're oh, talking about. No, you don't know about this because it's escalating. This is the perimeter of the north side wall that oh, abuts. Oh, that's your basement. Yes, okay. that is the basement. Uh, this week, Tuesday, I walked down there and there's seepage all over. So it's spreading from the back side of that north side property where I have neglected to give you pictures of the mold that is growing. This problem has only begun in the last year and a half since the removal of that curb in June. Now I'm going to reserve the rest of the pictures for when the lawyer attends and that's up to her what she divulges. This picture, you want to talk about a substantial change of use the parking is not grandfathered at that location, absolutely not. They, they started parking there for the baseball season last year, trying to claim that the use was never ceased. However, what they did was more than double the parking area while omitting any buildings. So that use is substantially different. Not only that, but when you change something like that, it requires different types of site plans. And not just draft plans that were given to me when I met with James and the town manager on July the 2nd of last year. I was given three draft plans by LaSalle or whoever it is, and, the, and which is one of the draft plans that you guys were given with that application with no survey, with no deeds, nothing, no engineering aspects, nothing. They just threw themselves in next door on a half-assed job for a $200,000 parking lot. So yeah, and I noticed that now you're trying to change the parking scheme in the land use ordinance. If that changes. No. I, I don't know. You're talking about removing parking spaces and all that no, stuff. No, just defining no, what no, a parking no. space is. Okay. Car cars are bigger these days, so that's why. It's just the square footage for a parking space. Okay. All right. As long as that doesn't come into play with me down the road. Anyway, that's two years ago, going to a year ago. I have presented you a cracked foundation. Now I'm showing you water. I'm showing you this water. I haven't shown you the mold accruing in the northwest section of the house. It is not. A few meetings ago, you people were trying to deflect, saying that the problem may be in my home. It isn't. Who's I, you people? Yeah, who said that? Everybody. You had mentioned it yourself, Chairman. No, I didn't. That No, in discussion with the people in the background who are involved in this project, that, you know, well, we don't know if maybe, you know, the problem is, is with their property. Yes, that was a deflection to possibly the problem is mine. If anybody had walked up there this week during those thunderstorms, and I have presented to you, I think by email, the accumulation of what I call a catch basin in that dirt portion where they removed the curbing that I took the other guy to court for. No, I'm sorry, we didn't get to court. They dropped it, put a curb up, 
and stop the flooding against my house. That curb, I fought and paid for to get it done and left it at that. And the house has been dry ever since that curb came up, except, except for one incident when either the town or Verizon crushed our exit perimeter drains and your former town manager sent somebody from Berwick up to fix it. That's the only reason my property has flooded in 20 some years. So, you know, I'm not getting it, dicking around with this, this just jumping over there, no site plan, no nothing. Now, recently, I am told that this property has been surveyed. I see one survey tape to the back of it on my side. I don't see the front survey tape, which I know that property because we moved here in 1968. I have witnessed at least three surveys. The people, the owners have removed those rods from the front. I know where that property line is on the front. And, um, you know, I just can't believe this application is still ongoing. It's been, what, about a year now? I've been more than patient. It's, it's just unbelievable. You know, and now, I mean, <laughs> it's just unbelievable. We have brown water in this town. You could have dumped 200 grand into possibly upgrading. It's not relevant okay. to the planning board, okay? okay. Right. I'm, Just I'm sure you have lots of things you're unhappy spending. about, but we don't have okay. much to do with most of them. Okay. Let's discuss hydrostatic conductivity, soil physics, and test pit. None of this was done prior to the excavation of 71 Sullivan Street. Okay, these are things that can be brought up on the first. The first of when? August. When the town is coming before the planning board for this application. Go for it. That's August 1st or August 15th? First. August 1st. Is that scheduled? My lawyer as, needs to as clear as her I, calendar no, for Sarah, that. I mean, I've talked talk with Sarah. Uh, as long as we, uh, I'm trying to meet with Todd, who's the engineer, early next week, and then go over exactly what we need to do and then have everything prepared by that Thursday. As long as we have everything by that Thursday, it'll be on for August 1st. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's what we're shooting for. Okay, you're shooting for August 1st. Yeah. And that's with a complete site plan? Yeah. Drainage included? Well, complete, complete, um, of topography. So I'm not sure how that's going to turn out, what the results is going to be. Well, what do you mean by topography? How are they going to address that? So they've, they, as part of the survey, they look, they look at the layout. James, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bail you out here. Thank you. We're gonna see what happens on the first. James doesn't yeah. know exactly what the, the engineer that's been hired by the town mm -hmm. is going to be coming into the planning department and then yeah. to the board with. We don't know what's gonna yeah. be. And in we can't that. really talk about the application right? without the applicant being here either. Well, in detail without, like without that. Without the application. Right. Uh, without an application. There is no application. <laughs> that's true. Well, there is an application. Uh, no. And it's been no, tabled. No, we, we had a presentation, but we yeah. haven't had a formal application, no. I thought that's what was presented, your initial application on April 18th. There was lots of stuff April missing 18th. in there. It was just sort of a general workshop sort of thing, as I remember. Mm, no, I don't think so. I was told it was supposed to be an informational meeting, and an application was given to this board. That's yeah, what I, I, I remember, on the application. April 18th. We didn't act on the application. I know. I know. It's yeah. still open, such as the public hearing for it, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll, I'll be in touch to confirm. By, the, by, by next Thursday, I'll know for sure if it's on for August 1st. Okay. That's good. I briefly looked at my emails today, and I see there's an exchange between you and she. Yep. And then she sent me something else I didn't have time to read. But one other question here. I, uh, somebody told me that um, some, some sort of exchange happened tonight that um, was in relation to uh, the planning board. If the planning board cannot order the CEO to do anything, then how do you guys oper authorize a cease order against ready mix? Can we possibly address that tonight? Sure. Tried to. The code, <laughs> the code enforcement officer went and without, I mean, the town planner had talked to him and said, this is in violation, and he went and he, he served him with the cease order. 
Who was that, the town planner? Yeah, Lee Jay. Lee Jay. Okay, I didn't realize that Lee Jay does that. I what thought it was the CEO. No, he the no, CEO. no, he is the CEO. He told It was Lee Jay's opinion, but it, only the CEO has the authority to issue oh, the cease and desist. Yeah. So this CEO yes, that, forced a cease and desist order on ReadyMix? Correct. Okay. Okay, that's very interesting. Yeah, we've mentioned um, it actually a couple of times. I think every time actually, this that's comes the, up, that's the we, analogy that we always we use. We mention it every single time this comes up, every meeting, mm -hmm. every single time we mention it. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So you know, the last time around in May, it's discussed that nobody's in control of this parking lot. That. We could blame it on, you know, who's responsible. Public Works is responsible for this, or maybe the baseball is responsible for that, or somebody else. And, and nobody knows who's in control. I don't get it. I don't get it. Somebody controlled Ready Mix, but nobody wants to control this parking lot. And I think it's the town of Berwick. I just, tonight, I, I did say who's in control of this. I haven't seen that. Hopefully it's recorded so I can watch it. Right. Who's in control of this is the town manager mm -hmm. and the selectmen. We've direct we've asked the town the chairman of the select board if he wants if he can if he will direct the town manager to close the parking lot and he said no. He said that tonight? Is that it's, what it's you can watch tonight? it. He he was here okay. for a public comment. Okay. Did he explain why? Yeah. No. Well, no. I I'm not I can I don't want to I don't want to quote him okay. and be off, but okay. you can look at the, the meeting because he did speak after. Does he live with the, is he your husband or live he with you? He is the, my husband. He's your husband. So when he, after, directly after him, um, directly after your husband spoke, Tom Wright spoke directly after that. We questioned him on that. Okay. All right. So the parking lot's going to continue. Nobody's going to go say close it like there's people, you know, next to us today. I'm here because I'm not in my backyard yeah. tonight, you know? I understand your frustrations. I yeah. really do. We've said every, every single meeting, we've said close it. We yeah. say it before the meeting, we say it after the meeting, we say it during the meeting. There's nothing that we can do yep. besides rent. I, I guess we can't even go get a backhoe and do it ourselves, but we, we sure as hell would if we could. Okay, all right. So if my lawyer can't clear her calendar on August the 1st, would you mind extending it to August the 15th? Since it's been two years this started, I don't think a couple more weeks would hurt so my lawyer can be in attendance. Well, we would, would that be acceptable? This, I mean, we'd still, if it's gonna be on, we don't even know if it's gonna be on the agenda, but it, the application hasn't even been, uh, the first step would be to, to make it complete or to v approve it complete. Yeah. There's many more steps past that. And there's then there's still walk, a public hearing and, and a site a public walk, hearing. Yeah. The site, well, if, if, Theoretically, if it, the application was found complete, if it was on the agenda for August 1st, then the site walk and the public hearing would be on the 15th, if, This is the application that you guys laughed about when it was submitted to you and mm -hmm. it looked like a four-year-old or a two-year-old wrote it. Those were the meeting's um, comments that I remember because it was a terrible application. Yeah, I have it right. I just looked at it, and well, I didn't. The, it it wasn't. Like a four, I have a four-year-old handwriting. That's why I looked like a four-year-old. All right, but it looks like a four-year-old compiled all this, the materials the submittal, required submittal, for it too. Submittal requirements, right? That was submitted to see what else was needed, right? If you look at the requirements for a conditional use application, yeah. Okay, you can go through it letter by letter. Fine. Tell me what I was glaringly missing. And there's no. There's no way to. There's nothing there. There's no deed, there's no site plan, so the there's deed, no survey, the there's, right. no, there's no survey, soil analysis. Survey is not required for a conditional use application. No, but we, we did recommend it. Yeah, no, that. exactly. We recommended it and they, yeah. Okay. It's basically required. Yeah. One more it's thing. Required, right. You can't ride off of the old grandfather theory if you substantially change the oh, property. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're there right. You go. Oh, we agree. There you go. That's going to be the key to all this. Well, go back and look at the, the video. Yeah. Which, Which video? We, Which one? The, the one where your husband was here and the one where yes, we questioned Yes, that. I'm on my way there now. I'm sorry. I missed the first public meeting. <laughs> I had to work and couldn't get out of it. Okay. Oh, I no, it's okay. Well, yeah. Yes, it's, I'm going It's to. there. Yes. Um, so everybody's in agreement. Sarah can't make it here August 1st. We're good for the 15th. No, we're, we're still going to 
The public hearing will be the 15th. She'll have more than enough opportunity to say whatever she needs to do. If, if it gets approved. If, 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 it gets gets, approved. if the application gets approved is complete. Okay. So what we're doing right now is that incomplete, app, or that little application that you were given on April 18th, we're, they're going to add some more documents and a survey and other stuff, and we're just going to call that the application, and we're going to judge if it checks off the checklist. Complete. Right. There's a, there's a checklist that's for applications. Every application has to go through this checklist. And if they check every box, the application is complete, and then they can start the process. Okay. You can't even start the process without a completed application. Okay. Can anybody get me that checklist? Yes. Is that public knowledge? It is. It's oh, in the yeah. land use ordinance. It's in the land use ordinance. Yeah, it's the land use ordinance online. If yeah. you go on, copy. If you go online to the conditional use in site plan application now, uh, on the website? Yeah, on the website. Okay. It's on, the checklist is right on the application now on the second page. Okay. And this is on the town website under the land use application or some other kind of You go to the addendum. BerwickMaine.org on a desktop and you hover over community development and planning or hover over um, departments, you'll see community development and planning. You'll see that, you'll see it right there. It's easy. Okay. It should be easy. I hope it's easy. What's find. the title? Yeah, I think it's going to be easy. Condition enough. use application slash site plan application. Awesome. All right. All right. Thank See you so much. Thank you, Louisa. Thank you. Next on the agenda is the adjournment. I move. Please let's adjourn. <laughs> I move that we adjourn the uh, Thursday, July 18th meeting, planning board meeting. Oh. Oh. Did we get a second? I second. That? <laughs> Any discussion? I don't know. I have nothing to discuss Is about adjourning. Important? No. no. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Further discussion? All in favor? 